Hi, I want to make a quick video of the suspension system of a Fiat 500 so we all understand how this uh, suspension system works. The first thing from the very top, that is the top of the shock strut tower. And as you can see, it uses a little uh, nut and bolt thread that goes through there and a washer and a little rubber pad so it seats correctly at the top. Underneath there is a heavy rubber uh, mounting point that uh, ties into the top of the chassis where you see the green paint. All right, going down below, let's take a look at what's below here. And there is the bottom of that, I should say the bottom of the top, uh, where the spring is and the strut, the shock absorber is inside that little bellows. And the whole strut assembly, it's called a strut assembly, goes all the way down. Let me turn the camera here. You can see those two bolts right here. That's what bolts the strut assembly to the hub assembly. And this is the hub assembly right here where the uh, this like black piece is. That's got the wheel bearing and it carries the brake rotor. Here's the brake lines. Here's the calipers. Here's the pads. This is the pad left and right. Um, and then this, of course, is called the rotor. And this is what stops the car when you hit the brake. These things kind of squeeze together. That's how it works. Okay, over here, this is called an ABS sensor uh, that goes down into the hub assembly. There it is right there. It uses a little five millimeter hex bolt that holds it in. And um, now back behind there, you can see that's the drive shaft. See where the little bellows is? That is the drive shaft that actually powers the car from the transmission. And that goes through to the transmission itself. So that's a new piece that's in there right now. And um, of course you have to dismantle this uh, hub assembly here to get that in. And it secures with this nut right here at 229 foot-pounds of torque to get that in there. Um, so not a real, real easy job, but it can be done. Um, also, this is a strut brace right here, just part of the frame and holding the you know, front uh, end of the car. On the bottom, you can see what's called the lower control arm. That is that new piece right there with the holes in it, and it has a ball joint. Let's see if I can turn the camera. There's the ball joint right there. And uh, it's got a little capture bolt that holds it in to the bottom of the hub assembly. So when the suspension goes up and down, that's what travels up and down. There's a, a little uh, lever style bushing in there. You can see that's the, that's the lever style bushing and it's connected over here too. You can see that uh, bolt that holds the uh, back edge of the control arm. It waves over to the right, so to speak, or toward the back of the car. Okay, now in front of this is the steering arm. This is the steering arm right here where my flashlight is pointing. And that's what, when you turn the car left or right, that's what makes the, the whole hub assembly move so the car can actually turn. Below that, where you see the little striped piece of paper, that is the sway bar. And those things are very, very hard and they're hard to bend. I don't know of anybody who's really bent one unless it's in a bad crash. But right there is a little torque control rod and it goes up and uh, fastens to the strut assembly. So that's what allows the suspension to move up and down and control its oscillation. So it's important that this component here, um, you know, allows the suspension to travel in a good manner. So you have a nice ride and it basically uh, keeps control of your car. So other than that, it's relatively simple. There's a wheel bearing inside behind here, and uh, sometimes that wheel bearing could go bad. Let me give you a shot of the back of the hub assembly. There it is right there. And uh, it's a big, big, uh, you know, uh, cast product, but uh, hard to hurt those things, but uh, they're very, very strong. There's the transmission right there, and, uh, you know, Basically, you've got a motor mount that is uh, um, near that, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. This is a brand new motor mount. This actually goes underneath the battery. It takes uh, three bolts to hold it in, and it's relatively inexpensive. You have to take the battery out to get to it. And then there's another motor mount on the passenger side, and that is what it looks like. And you can see it allows the engine to flex a little bit. This one is an old one, so it's got a little bit of wear in it, so that's why I replaced it. Let me show you where that location is. There's the motor mount right there that I just showed you, right underneath the coolant bottle. As you can see, it's bolted into the engine with three bolts, and then on the other side, I think there's um, 
three more bolts to hold it in underneath the coolant bottle. So you have to remove the coolant bottle to get to it and then suspend the car so that, um, or suspend the engine so that you basically can uh, relieve the pressure on it and uh, change it. So one other quick note, back down here, you'll see a little round piece. That is the vacuum pump assembly and it runs off of the top of the motor as the motor spins and that creates a vacuum for the car. Those things can go bad too. One thing you can do on these is take a napkin or something or put your hand underneath there and make sure you don't see any wet oil. If they go bad, you'll see a little bit of uh, oil that's dripping off of there. This one I actually had to replace. It's about $250 for the part to replace it. And then back below, I'm sorry, back above it, there is a PVC assembly. Let me see if I can get the camera in there. I'm not sure I can get the camera in there. There's the top of the piece of it right there. That is a, a little PVC assembly that basically will, um, you know, it's a breather assembly. And those can possibly leak too. They get a little bit of oil on the seal that, that bleeds through. It could get to the number four cylinder right there by dripping down or dripping down along the side of the engine. So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's a, a wear item that eventually might need to be replaced. They're about $60 to buy the whole assembly. Okay, so basically this is uh, what you're looking at on, on these. And so it's not a real, real super complicated thing. But as long as you understand how all this works, you know, to sum it up, when the car hits a bump, this strut assembly goes up and down. This can pivot uh, on the steering arm and uh, give you control. So you need to have a good lower control arm on the bottom, a good ball joint on the bottom. Then you have to have everything tied in right here and torqued up properly. And that little stabilizer bar needs to be connected to the sway bar. So that's how all that works. So these are uh, products that can be replaced from time to time. Uh, they will generally wear, but if you're having some uh, suspension problems and all that, this is kind of what it looks like inside. So I hope this helps you. And uh, if uh, I can help you, you can always email me at John at Benson Fiat. So uh, there you go. Just a quick overview. I hope you have a great day and uh, we'll see you down the road. Ciao.